Hello guys, this is Caesar Creates, and welcome back to my channel! In today's video we are adding another dinosaur to our tropical valley park. I decided to add a Nasutoceratops as a next dinosaur, because for me it made sense to add it next to the Stracosaurus, because those two dinosaurs belong to the same family. In the last video of our Prehistoric Kingdom Alpha series, we added this Styracosaurus. I've built a lovely canyon for Styracosauruses, so if you haven't seen that video, I will put the link down in the description and on the screen. Today I wanted to build something different and unique for our Nasutoceratops. We only have 6 dinosaurs right now in the Alpha edition of this game, and obviously we'll add them all to this park. But for each and every of them I would like to build something unique, so that when you go through this park it seems like a real adventure. So for our Nasutoceratops I came up with an idea of building a cliff, so that it acts both like a habitat boundary, I mean habitat barrier, and also a beautiful landscape for guests to admire. My idea was that up and behind this cliff there is this very dense jungle and this jungle ends with this cliff, this wall of rocks. I think if I remember correctly from school uh, that those kinds of formation they are created by water erosion. So let's imagine that some time ago there was a river or some lake here and it dried out, but it managed to create this cliff, this very steep rock formation. And now this is basically a natural boundary for the jungle that grows behind this wall. So as you can see, just as in last episode, we are using a lot of rocks. I am super in love with the rocks in this game. Uh, they look super good when you combine them together, they always fit together. I also like this color of the tropical rocks, I think it looks very natural. And when you put some plants in between those rocks, I mean the crevices and so on, it makes such an interesting and also natural look that, you know, we can create super natural landscapes, something that you will see actually in real jungles. And this is super pleasing to my eye. As I said before, the rocks, they create also a boundary of the habitat. I mean, it's like a barrier of the rocks so that animals can't cross it. And I wonder how it actually will work in the full version of this game. I mean, in Planet Zoo, when you create, you know, natural barriers, uh, you can use the null barrier to to set the parameter of the habitat, so the game can calculate the actual area of the habitat and you can see whether the habitat is a right size or is it too small for an animal. By now in Prehistoric Kingdom we don't have anything like this. I mean the welfare of uh, all the animals is always 100%. They also cannot cross the rocks, they cannot climb or and do anything like this. So you can basically, you know, put the rocks around them and they won't be able to escape and they will always be happy. Uh, but I wonder how it will look in the, you know, final edition of this game, if there also be something like null barrier or the game will know by itself that, uh, you know, the dinosaur can't cross the rock, so that's the natural barrier of the habitat. I guess we need to wait and see, but for me this is really interesting. In this build I wanted to create the look that, you know, this canyon or this cliff is very old so some of the rocks they fell from this cliff because of, you know, again, water, wind and all the natural forces affecting this cliff over time. So there will be a lot of rocks lying down this uh, huge rocky wall. There will be some, you know, fallen off, like here I built a rock that just have fallen off on another rock and they created this, like, gate from rocks. And uh, the dinosaurs are actually able to walk under there, so it's really cool. 
There is also this huge rock that fell down and now it's leaning against the wall. So yeah, this is something that I went for. You'll also be able to see it with the plants uh, in the, on the later stage. I wanted to add plants and trees that will actually grow inside of this wall. I mean, you know, the seeds fell somewhere in the, somewhere in the crevices of the rocks and they uh, grew out. And now the tree is growing inside of this uh, cliff. But I also imagine that uh, because of the wind, some of the trees were broken and they fell down this cliff. So there'll be a lot of dead trees uh, down there and also in the crevices of the rocks. So yeah, this is something that I was going for and I hope that I, will, I was able to achieve this kind of look. You of course will be able to see it by the end in the cinematic shots. Uh, so if you want to see the entire habitat, definitely stay till the end of this video. In a second I will start to once more use those small rocks. I'm so in love with them, I mean, you know, the piles of small rocks. They make everything come together really nice and they also help to create this look that, you know, this, that large amounts of those small rocks just felt of this wall of this, you know, high rock formation and are lying down there. So yeah, I definitely used a lot of them in this build. The more I play Prehistoric Kingdom, it actually gets a lot easier for me because at first it was uh, hard to adjust, you know, to all the controls uh, that are different for Planet Zoo because I mainly used to play Planet Zoo uh, during last one and, a half, one and a half year. But now I really enjoy building in this game. I think that it's very easy, very fast and you know, just a pleasure to build here actually. Of course, there are some parts that need some improvement, but this is only an alpha version, so I'm sure that a lot of improvements will be implemented in the future. The developers of this game already have uh, provided us with an update that fixed a lot of issues, so yeah, I have high hopes for uh, for the future that some of the issues that I still have with building will also be fixed. One of them is definitely aligned to the surface option. There is something really off with it. I mean, the angles that of this, those pieces that are aligned to the surface are very weird. So, uh, you know, it's sometimes hard to make things even, to make it, make them, you know, in the degree or in the angle that you want to. Uh, you need to like eyeball uh, the right angle to make everything even. So, you know, this is something that definitely needs some improvement, but I can forgive them for giving us scaling option. And I hope that it will actually be improved in the future. The one thing that we still don't have in alpha and is very, very useful is the undo tool or an undo button. You know, you just make some mistake, you can click this arrow, just undo this thing and it's all gone. But now, for example, when you delayed something and you realize that it was in group with a whole building or a whole, you know, a lot of pieces, it all gets delayed and you cannot do anything. You have to rebuild all the things, which is really annoying and scary for me. Uh, while building this habitat, I actually deleted the entrance by accident. And I was like, oh no, what I'm gonna do? I need to re rebuild it all. But fortunately, I was able to just, you know, reset the game and I had some autosave and it was still there. So <laughs> I didn't lose anything, but my heart stopped for a minute because I thought that I will be, I will have to rebuild it all because I have a tour of this park planned when we are finished with all the habitats. So, giving you guys a tour without an entrance that we've built in the first uh, episode will be kind of strange. <laughs> so, I was super happy that I was able to, you know, recover our entrance with, with a quick solution of turning off the game. So yeah, you really need to be very careful with that, but I'm sure that we'll also get the undo option on, on some points. 
As you can see, I already started to work on a viewing terrace for our guests. This habitat will have a very cool viewing. I mean, there's a terrace or a viewing platform for the guests. It's very long, so they are always able to, you know, have a look on the dinosaurs. I was actually surprised how easy it was to build something like this. Of course, I had some issues with align to the surface option, but besides this, it took me only about a few minutes to build. I didn't include, you know, all the footage of building it because after it was only copying the, the one piece of the Taras, uh, so I cut it out to not make this video too long for you guys. In the end, I am super happy with how it turned out. I mean, I love that the guests are able to use it even though it's not a path. There will also be some, you know, shading part for guests. I mean, the like, a roof uh, from new chain link fences that we've got lately. So if you want to see it, there will be footage of it by the end of this video. Thanks to this terrace, we were also able to set the boundary of the habitats for the animals. I mean, I've built it from the stone pieces that we have right now. And it also looks really cool uh, from the animal perspective. I mean, speaking of animals, I really love the Nasutoceratops model. It has a really nice coloration. It has those horns that are, uh, you know, very similar to bulls, which is a characteristic feature for this dinosaur. And I think that they basically nailed it. It looks very cool. Also, I feel like it moves better than the Styracosaurus because last time we had an issue with Styracosaurus having like, you know, very weird foot movements, but the uh, Nasutoceratops doesn't seem to have it. And, you know, it looks, it moves very smoothly throughout the whole habitat. And as I said, I really like this model. I really like this dinosaur and I'm very happy that it was actually added to this game. Because it's not one of those, you know, iconic dinosaurs like Triceratops and so on. So having dinosaurs like this is really interesting because we can get to learn something about them. This is what I also say every time about Planet Zoo animals that are unique. I am really happy that they add those kinds of animals because people that don't know them, know much about them can actually learn something. And I think that it is really cool. And when it comes to the learning, I think that it is time for our fun facts. So as you guys know, every time we add another animal or another dinosaur, I try to give you some fun facts about it so that you can learn something from my videos and know more about the animals and dinosaurs that you're adding to your zoos. The Nasutoceratops was discovered in United States in southern Utah. The Nasutoceratops got its name from the big nose the dinosaur apparently has. It is often described as big-nosed, horn-faced dinosaur. But the scientists don't associate its big nose with a good sense of smell. Those dinosaurs had parrot-like beak with hundreds of teeth that they used for chomping up plant food. Above the beak and around it, there was an outer chamber of the nose that may have been used to cool off the brain or also to hold soft tissues that could make noises. It seemed very similar to elephant seals and how they make their noises. They were obviously herbivore animals, but there was actually no grass around at the time when they lived. So they ate a lot of ferns and flowering plants and conifers. Scientists are sure that uh, the beak was used for pulling off vegetation and the teeth were used for slicing it up into smaller parts. And of course, it had curved horizontally uh, horns that are very reminiscent to the one of modern cattle. We actually don't know much about the Nasutoceratopsis because very few skeletons were actually discovered. 
Anyway, it is a very interesting dinosaur and I'm sure that if you have some time you can find even more interesting facts about it online. And now let's go back to today's build. As you can see, I started to add a bit details to this habitat. I mean those fallen trees and branches that I told you about earlier. I also add a lot of uh, rocks around the water area and some smaller stones just to give this habitat some texture, to make it more interesting and also to fill up the gaps in spaces where the dinosaurs could possibly escape. In a second I will start to add foliage to this habitat. As much as I love the brush that allows you to put the foliage just as, you know, painting the terrain, for me it seems a bit lazy to use it inside of the habitat. I mean, it's perfect when you want to fill in some gaps in your park with foliage and you want and you don't want to spend a lot of time doing that, just, you know, grab this tool and fill in the spaces with some foliage. But for actual habitats, I don't quite don't like the fact that we cannot choose, you know, the angles of trees, we cannot choose their size and how they are positioned. So I prefer to put every tree and every plant by myself. I know that it is much more work and using this brush with plants is actually a lot easier but I want to have control when I put my plants, my trees so that I can create my own compositions of trees I can, you know, choose how I want my landscape to look I can choose what the guests will be able to see because I can create some, you know, places more or less visible for guests by using trees and other plants I can choose the plants that will be more suitable to use by the water and plants that will grow most likely in forests. That's why I don't want to use it a lot inside of the habitats, I mean this brush. I will use it for sure outside around the habitats to make things faster. And I want to focus and use my strength on uh, building habitats and decorating them and right now I feel that we don't have too many pieces, building pieces in Prehistoric Kingdom so I won't focus much on the areas outside the habitats, I just want to make habitats look good and that's why outside the habitats I would mostly use the brush tool with dense forest, tropical forest, just to give this whole park very dense, you know, very tropical uh, feeling. Uh, because in the end the name is Tropical Valley Park and I want to go for something like this. What I love about, you know, adding uh, shrubs and bushes in this game is that you can actually scale them as well. So you can make one bush in the size of five of them so that adding plants is very, e very easy and, you know, not so time consuming. And you are able to create this very lush uh, jungle uh, very, very uh, fast without, without basically any effort, just as I did here. I knew I wanted to have a lot of those plants, you know, in the crevices, be uh, in the rocks. Uh, so I added a lot of, a lot of those bushes, and I imagined that this is how they would actually grow. I also like to use the bramble bush I think it's called to create those creeping plants I mean the plants that you know grow on the rocks and so on uh, like vines and they go from the ground up uh, the, the cliff and I think that it's like really nice thing to add to this cliff like it adds a lot of realism and it looks very very cool and just as I said last time I can repeat that in every video I love plants in this game I think that they look super realistic I think that you know scaling them gives you so much uh, opportunities because you can change the size you can change the angles and so on and basically one uh, the same model of the tree can look totally different after you scale it 
I think that they nailed the foliage in this game and I'm waiting for more when it will be added on the later stage. And I am super curious how the plants will look when the game is released, how many we will get and I'm hoping for as many as we can get. Also, the guests in the game right now, they don't do anything, they just, you know, walk around, they don't stop to look at animals or they don't use any facilities. You'll be able to see me uh, adding the branches and bins for them, but they won't use, it, use them. And I am super curious how they actually will act when the game is released because I already like models of the guests that we have right now. They look realistic, they like fit to the uh, whole design of this game, which I really like. And I'm super curious how they actually will, you know, use the branches, how they will you know, react to the animals when they look, for example, at T-Rex or look at some other animals, uh, how they would use the shops and so on. This is very, like, very interesting for me and I cannot wait to see it when the game is finally released. Also, I'm waiting for more animation when it comes to dinosaurs because right now they just, you know, also walk around habitats, they make some sounds, sometimes they will like stop, sometimes they will lay down, but there is no like advanced animations, they even don't eat or drink or do any of those things, so I'm also really really curious on how it would look like. But I guess that all we can do right now is wait but I'm not a very patient person, so I hope the time will pass by very, very quickly. In a minute, you'll be able to see me work a little bit more on the viewing terrace. I decided to add some shades for guests and I wanted to build something with the new chain link uh, piece that we got with a new update to the alpha version. So I came up with a really cool concept of using, you know, those metal pieces and the chain link. To use the chain link as a net for creeping plants, I mean, I use the ivy that we have right now in the game. Uh, so I added those planters, so the ivy have some place for its roots, because actually it needs to have some soil to grow. And it already had some time, you know, to grow over the structure that I've built and over the time it will also take over it and the guests will have like a total shade in there. Uh, right now it just let's imagine that it was planted recently and it still has some time you know and place to grow so it isn't filled completely but right now I think that it looks very very cool because you can still see those uh, chain link parts uh, and you can see like how this ivy is growing over it. This was something that I found on Pinterest and this is for me a um, mine of ideas if you struggle with some inspiration for your zoos in Planet Zoo or for your parks in Prehistoric Kingdom. Uh, just, you know, go on Pinterest and try to search from some, some ideas for some inspiration. Uh, I mean, you can type in zoo architecture or you can just, you know, or some little architecture inside the city centers and it will for sure give you some inspiration for your builds. So yeah, if you struggle, just uh, type in Pinterest to your browser and I'm sure that you'll be able to find something very inspiring. Okay, this is all that I have for you today, guys. Please enjoy the rest of this speed build. Stay till the end because there will be some cinematic shots of the whole habitat so you'll be able to see it once it's finished and dinosaurs are roaming around it. Please subscribe if you haven't already and if you want to see me build more of those uh, dinosaur habitats in the prehistoric kingdom. If you enjoyed this video, please give it big thumbs up down below. Also ring the bell if you want to be notified every time I upload a new video. Also comment down below if you liked my video or if you have any recommendations on how I can improve my future videos. Thank you guys for watching, have a wonderful day and I'll see you in the next one!
Bye, guys!